I don't have to be good enough. God still loves me even with my weakness and my inadequacy and my failure and even in my shame. Then what we realize is that we have a belonging that's detached from performance. Well, hello, and welcome to Sunday Morning with Hope Valley Church. I'm Pastor Sam. I'm the lead pastor here at Hope Valley, and today we're continuing in a series on the wilderness, and this is part three in that series. You know, there are seasons in our life of following Jesus, and, and just like storms, seasons come and go without our permission. One of those seasons is a time of dryness and, and isolation, otherwise known as the wilderness. In the wilderness, we lose things that used to nourish us. We, we experience a loss of direction. We, we may feel like God is distant and silent. We may lose joy and, and satisfaction in the things that used to be life-giving. But these seasons are they're no accident. They are from God. He intentionally leads us through the wilderness so that certain things within us can die. You know, throughout the Bible, we see many stories of people being led through the wilderness by God, sometimes literally and, and sometimes figuratively. And in the wilderness, we experience different things within us begin to die. And God is using these little deaths. He's using them to empty us in order to draw us into a deeper life in Him. In the wilderness, we are being tested. Will we be faithful and obedient? in the middle of these losses. You know, sadly, many Christians fail this test. They, they turn back and, and they never make it through the wilderness. Yet, to become a mature man or woman in Christ, there really is there's no other way. And so, in this series, we will explore, you know, we're continuing to explore really four different kinds of death that God uses in the wilderness to empty us so that we may be filled to a greater level with him. And, and these deaths are, you know, the death of starvation, disillusionment, exposure, and detachment. And today we're going to be talking about exposure. Now, about two years ago now, I was unexpectedly uh, let go from my job, or we'll say I was invited to resign. And uh, that was a really, really hard thing for me. Uh, you know, um, I felt so incredibly ashamed. I remember leaving the office that day just thinking like I was just the lowest of the lowest of the low. I mean, after nearly 20 years in the workforce, uh, I had never been fired. I'd never been, as far as I knew, even close to it, right? Um, and so, you know, a lot of pride, frankly, that I had, uh, in the fact that I, you know, thought of myself as a good worker and a good employee, um, really just came crashing down, really just shattered. Uh, and the other part of that was really hard is that, you know, I really thought things were, they were going pretty well. You know, I, I thought the work environment and my work in the environment was good and that, you know, my boss was happy with me. And, uh, and so, you know, when I was, invited to resign, I was like, what's wrong with me? Is, is there some thing wrong with me that I don't see? Like, am I delusional? Am I a terrible employee? Am I a lazy bum and I don't even realize it? Like, what is wrong with me? And I felt ashamed. I felt exposed. I felt publicly humiliated. I mean, frankly, I wasn't really being publicly humiliated, but it certainly felt that way. Uh, and, and it was really, really hard. You know, and all of us have encountered times when our weakness, our inadequacy, uh, even our shame, you know, felt really exposed for all to see. You know, uh, maybe, uh, you know, you've put your best work, let's say, into a job. Um, but you still failed miserably. <laughs> Anyone ever do that, right? Like you really do your best and your best just really isn't good enough and, and everyone around you sees it, right? Or 
maybe a sin in your life that you had been hiding uh, gets exposed, you know, and you're outed, and, and your failure, um, your, your shame uh, becomes public, and everyone can see it, you know. Uh, maybe you've gone through a season where it feels like the facade of your perfect life comes crashing down. Or maybe you found yourself in, in the middle of a problem, and uh, you realized that you just had no idea how to solve that problem. And, and no matter what you tried, no matter what you did, you couldn't solve it. You couldn't fix it. And you really run up against the wall of your limitations and your ability to solve issues. You know, so whatever it is, we've all experienced times of exposure, right? Where our shame, our inadequacy, our failure uh, can't be hidden anymore. You know, just like you would feel exposed in the desert with, with no, uh, n- no shelter to block the sun, right? We, we feel exposed like that, like we're, we're naked and alone in the desert and we're being sunburnt and there's no shelter to hide under and we're just exposed for all to see. And, uh, you know, exposure really is a kind of death because it's, it's like a death in that you're public and or self-image really gets destroyed. You may feel even like a frog, right? Like just deeply ashamed and worthless. So like, what is God doing? (laughs) You ever wonder that, right? Like you're in a season of exposure like this and why are you doing this to me, God, right? Like like why is he exposing our limitations or failures and, and even our shame? Let's look here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and just read this uh, little part of this letter here from Paul. He's writing to the church in Corinth and he says, We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought we would never live through it. In fact, We expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. So we see Paul here talking about seizing his life when his best wasn't good enough. When he was, what does he say, right, overwhelmed beyond their ability to endure. In fact, they thought they were going to die. And his takeaway is that through the season, what he learned was to stop relying on God. I'm, no, I'm sorry, that's backwards. To stop relying on himself and rely on God, right? And let's continue. There's another way we see exposure here in the scripture. Psalm 32 verse 3 says, When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long. Day and night your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you. And I stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. And you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. So what we see here in Scripture is that in the exposure, God is removing the facade of our strength in order to draw us to Himself. And kind of this idea I want you to just have at the front of your mind today is that it's a hard one. Are you ready? God is going to embarrass your strength. To show you his. God is going to, he's going to embarrass your strength in order to show you his. You know, we really can't see God's strength when we're enamored with our own. And if you've been in a season of exposure like this and you go like, I feel like all of my pride and ego and strength and ability just is being embarrassed. I feel so embarrassed. It's like, yeah, 
God is embarrassing your strength in order to show you His strength. And not just show it to you, but draw you into it and teach you how to live and function by His strength, not by yours. You know, our ego and our misguided belief in our own abilities has to die so that we can truly embrace God's strength. Sometimes that death is necessarily violent because, frankly, we're really stubborn. But we have to remember that our weakness actually exists in order to demonstrate the strength of God. We see this in the Gospel of John when, when Jesus is uh, uh, you know, confronted with this blind man. He, he was born blind from birth and, and his disciples go like, hey, who messed up? Why is this guy born blind? Uh, did he sing somehow in his mother's womb? Did his, did his parents sing? And Jesus goes, no. No, no, nobody sinned. That's not why he's blind. He's blind. Listen to this. So that the power of God would be seen in him today. And then Jesus heals his blindness with his power. Right? We also see in 2 Corinthians, right, that, that our weakness and, and our frailty serves to, to show other people that the strength that we do have uh, comes from the Lord and not from ourselves. Right? And so it's helpful to remember that God actually makes us weak in order to draw us to his strength, in order to demonstrate his strength, in order to bring attention to him and teach us to rely on him, right? Because God will embarrass your strength in order to show you his. You know, at the end of our strength, at the end of our strength, what we find is the glorious and the unfailing power of God. That's the opportunity that we have when our weakness and our vulnerability is exposed. Is we have this opportunity to, in a new way, see the glorious, unfailing power of God. You know, a power, God's power is a power that we don't have to maintain. It's, it's only a power that we have to receive, right? And submit to. You know, if you've spent a lot of time in your life uh, maintaining the image of your own strength and ability and ego, that's exhausting. But when we see the glorious power of God, we begin to realize this power is so much better. I don't even have to maintain it. I don't even have to prop it up. I just have to receive the strength from God and submit to it. Right? Right? It also gives us a weight off of our shoulders that we were never meant to bear. You know, the weight of being good enough, strong enough, capable enough. You can't do that. I can't do that. That's not a weight that we can bear. It's not a weight that we were meant to bear. And so as we begin to allow the exposure of our weakness and fix our eyes on the strength of God, we're drawing in. By, by all these beautiful things. The fact that his strength removes a weight from my shoulders that I shouldn't have been carrying in the first place. So what do we do, right? What do we do in a season of exposure? Uh, a season where our failures, inadequacies, uh, shame are, are coming to light. What do we do, right? What do we do? Um, you're not, you, you might not like it, but here's what you need to do. You need to embrace your vulnerability. You need to embrace your vulnerability. Okay? Okay, but like, how do you do that, right? Well, the first thing is you want to move fast to repent. Okay? Uh, don't repent slowly. Move fast. Get there as quick as you can. Right? Don't resist or, you know, let shame hold you back from repenting. And, and just as a reminder, repenting is not just saying, I'm sorry. Repenting is saying, I'm going this way. I now realize this is a terrible way. I was really stupid and foolish for going this way. I'm making a mess of things. I am leaving this way. I'm turning back to God 
and I'm letting him lead me on the way that is good and reliable. That is repentance. That's what it means to repent. Okay. We want to move fast to that. We want to reject the lie that you need to be good enough. Okay, listen, you don't have to be good enough. So much in our world is like, you're good enough, you're smart enough, believe in yourself. It doesn't work for very long. We, we really come to realize, man, there are so many things in this world I am not ready for, I can't handle at all. It turns out I don't need to be good enough. So we have to reject the lie that we need to be good enough. We have to start being honest about our limitations. That's what you need to do, right? In a season of exposure, start being honest about your limitations. You know, in doing so, what you're going to experience is a deeper joy that comes from realizing that Jesus is already good enough for you. He is already good enough on your behalf. He's removed from you the need to be good enough. You just need to rely on his strength. The other thing we can do to embrace being vulnerable is to, if you will, exercise the muscle of um, asking for assistance from God, right? Uh, So much of the exposure of our weaknesses and vulnerabilities gives us an opportunity to stop living life like we can do it all on our own. And so if we're going to embrace our vulnerability, one of the ways we do that is by actually practicing asking for assistance and help from God and from other people. And here's the key, before we feel overwhelmed, okay? Pride will cause you to wait right until you can't take it anymore and then you ask for help. And that's never good, okay? Really embracing your vulnerability means that you ask for help before you get to the point where you're totally overwhelmed by your situation, all right? So moving fast to repent and practicing uh, practicing asking God and others for help are two really practical ways that we can begin to embrace our vulnerability and really lean into what God is doing in a season of exposure. And you know, I believe that if we all dig this, um, if, we, if we all learn to embrace our vulnerability, we would be less burdened by external and internal, right? Let's be real. A lot of the pressure we feel is actually not coming from outside. It's actually coming from inside. We put pressure on ourselves. And and if we could learn to embrace our vulnerability, we would be less burdened by external and internal pressure to perform. This is actually what begins to happen when we learn to detach performance from belonging. And that's really what I'm talking about today because when we realize I don't have to be good enough, God still loves me even with my weakness and my inability and my inadequacy and my failure and even in my shame, God still loves me. Then what we realize is that we have a belonging in his family that's detached from performance. And when we really grasp that, we begin to live life less burdened by all these pressures to perform. Doesn't that sound great, right? Uh, I I think it does. I think we all need that. Uh, But it's gonna require us to embrace our vulnerability as we lean into a spirit, to a season of exposure that God has us in. So let me give you some questions that I want you to just pray about and think about this week as you go, uh, hopefully a little bit deeper with what we've been talking about today, okay? Uh, The first question is, what weakness is God exposing in your life? How might you be resisting or denying the weakness that God is exposing in you? And third question is, how might your attitude toward your weakness be making you even weaker? What do you think about that? How might your attitude towards your weakness actually be making you even weaker? All right. 
Well, again, really uh, thankful that you've joined us for this time. I really do hope that it's been helpful and a blessing for you. And I do hope that you'll take the time with these questions this week to pray about them and reflect on them and go a little bit deeper with the things we've been talking about. Uh, you know, uh, we have one more lesson left in the series as we talk about detachment. I uh, hope that you'll join us for that. But uh, once again, thank you for being here uh, with us. And uh, just pray that God will bless you today. All right. We love you. Bye-bye. We are so glad you have joined us today. To learn more about Hope Valley Church and get access to free resources, just go to www.hopevalley.church. There you will also find links to connect with us on Facebook and Instagram, as well as links to our podcasts now available on Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please take a moment to like and subscribe so you can stay up with new videos coming out every week. Hope Valley is a church based in Winchester, Virginia that meets in homes around the region. So if you'd like to find out more about home churches, how they work, and how to locate one near you, just go to hopevalley.church/house. Thanks again for joining us and may God bless you today.